First, I thought I would just use the launch pad, you know, with the normal notes. And then I thought, maybe I should do something more specific to Koala to take advantage of the mini mapping. I logged on to my uh, computer and used the components app to build this particular layout. I'll just describe the layout here in a second. So you send this custom layout to the launch pad. I'm gonna put it in uh, slot one. There you go. So the idea here, I'll go over it, but essentially these pads at the top would be the locations for your samples. So I have two banks of 16. I only did bank A and bank B. Then down here, I've got this two by four bank that I'm using for patterns. The buttons across the top, I'm using as edit buttons. I've got a stop and a play button. And then over here, I've got a metronome and a beats per minute. And I just basically save that and call it Koala. So, what I've done here is I've mapped my launch pad to Koala Sampler. And to do that, you go into settings, click on MIDI map, and you'll see all of the pads can be mapped and all of the controls can be mapped in the sample window. If you go to the sequence window, you can map things like the play and record metronome and the patterns area. So what I've done in this setup is I've got two banks of 16 pads, which represent the 16 pads in A and the 16 pads below it in B. I didn't bother doing C and D. I figured A and B would be enough. Then in the sequencer, I mapped just these eight pattern blocks to these eight buttons down here. And I mapped the play and stop button and the metronome button. So if you go back to A, you see I can play. And if I play this second group, Okay. The interesting thing is, even though group B of your samples is visible, you can still hear A. Even though you don't see them lighting up, they're still available to you. So you've got a total of 32 samples to play around with. Then these patterns up here map to these buttons. I press play. Now, the interesting thing about the buttons for play, record, and metronome is in the software you use to do your custom MIDI setup, I assigned CC numbers to these different buttons, but they had to be on toggle mode, not just node execution mode. Uh, if they are not on toggle, the play button will behave strange. You have to press and hold the play button, whereas the way I've got it is it toggles. So if I choose like a blank pattern and press record, and same with metronome. So if I play a different pattern, just go to one that's melodic. toggles the metronome off and on. So the last area is these white buttons here. And I, I've been playing around with this, trying to decide what to do. I'll tell you what my original intention was that when you're editing a sample and you click on edit, there's actually um, nine buttons along here. There's one for one shot, reverse and loop. 
So I thought I would assign those. I don't have all of that working. You see that that one turns on attack, release, tone, but the behavior of those buttons, I haven't quite figured out. Are they toggles? Are they momentary changes? Usually they're switches and then they're allowing you to make changes to your sample up above. I'm not sure that the launch pad is actually gonna come in handy for any of those types of things. So the other thing it doesn't do is uh, just say you wanna record something into this cell. Uh, you can see I just, I just recorded something. Uh, you would think you just press this button and record. Ah, that doesn't work. And press the button. You see it lights up, but there's no way to turn it into the record mode, which is kind of weird because in settings, there is this feature, MIDI can record pads, and I have that turned on. Uh, MIDI can select pads. Yeah, that's turned on too. So the other, you know, I thought, okay, what if I turn that off? Go back in here. No, still doesn't work. So I haven't figured out how to turn on record from the launch pad. The other idea I had is in the performance page, when you're playing uh, your patterns, maybe there's something that could be done with a custom configuration of the launch pad to control these various parameters for your performance. I haven't really played around with that, but the launch pad does have this um, ability to work like a, a, a dial by pressing up and down the various buttons. And um, I, might, I might play around with that a little bit. I'm not sure that that would even buy me anything because quite honestly, right now, if you, if you just play, play a pattern, you know, what's the difference? I'm not sure having that touch functionality on the launch pad actually buys you anything. Well, after I was done playing around with the iPad, I decided, hey, maybe I should try using my Launch Key Mini with uh, Koala. So I did uh, the MIDI mapping for this device and basically mapped the pads. Oh, I just remembered. If you don't turn this keyboard thing off, it's not going to execute the pads. The other thing I did was I mapped some of these dials. So for volume, pitch, and pan, you know. One of the limitations of the Launch Key Mini is that it only has one custom mode. So there's a session mode, which works great with Ableton or Logic, and then there's a drum mode and one custom mode. So in the custom mode, I made it all red just so I would know I was in custom mode. I mapped those 16 pads to these 16 sample slots. You have to switch between that bank and the drum bank. I don't know if that's useful or not. I guess it depends. If you're executing 16 samples at a time in order to create a pattern in the sequence mode, uh, you know, jumping back and forth between them. I don't know if that's all that useful or not. The other thought I had was mapping the second 16 to some of the patterns so that when you press play, you could select the patterns in your performance mode uh, from the pads. The other advantage you get with the keyboard, of course, is you get a physical keyboard. So if you choose a, a sound, you set this to chromatic and set this to the keyboard setting, you know.
Some people might find it easier to play these little keys than to play them on the touch screen, I guess. The other thing I ran into is that the play and record buttons, which are dedicated on the launch key, didn't exist on the launch pad, behave kind of strange. You press play, you have to hold it down. Same with record. The problem here is that these buttons need to be in a toggle mode. And there was no way with the component software from Novation to change the settings for the transport controls. You change the pads, you can change the dials, you can change some of what's on the keys, but you cannot change the transport controls, which is a bit of a problem. So I was trying to figure out, you know, what else could I do here? Could I use some of those knobs for different things? Yeah, I could have assigned those eight knobs to these effects, which might have been handy in the performance mode, you know, if you want to tweak the reverb or the stutter or something like that. Uh, but generally speaking, you have to evaluate, you know, how much am I getting out of having this device versus just using the touch screen, especially with Koala. Oh, the other thing I did was uh, tempo. I, I did the stupid thing of assigning it to this particular dial. So if, you know, you wanted to change the uh, tempo a lot, you could do it quickly with the dial. But the reality is when you're recording a song in Koala, you generally set the tempo and keep the tempo throughout the uh, the project. You, you, you know, you don't change the tempo on a given sample or during the performance. The other thing I was looking for was, could you MIDI assign the effects so that when you're recording a sound into a cell, you could apply those effects more dynamically with the knobs? Well, guess what? those effects are not MIDI assignable. So just as a reminder, if you go into settings, I played around with this quite a bit, MIDI, and then click on map MIDI. You know, this shows you all the components that you can map within MIDI. So another thing I could have done is I could have taken these edit buttons like edit, reverse, loop, attack, release, and tone, and assigned those to knobs. But in many cases, this is a variety of toggles, like one shot is off or on, reverse is off or on, but attack, release, and tone have variable settings. And even choke, you're assigning each uh, sample to a choke group. And that really doesn't lend itself to using this particular keyboard. Sends a MIDI note for each one of these pads to MIDI channel 10, and you can see, you see that show up here. It's got, you know, E1 10, F sharp 10, and that's just from pressing these buttons. That was the default from the factory. When I went to um, the custom mode, of which you can only have one, I ended up assigning these all to MIDI channel one. So you can see C3 1 is, is there. And um, when you stop the, the mapping, Oops, I'm still in that keyboard mode. So remember, I have to turn that off. And just like the launch pad, you're supposed to be able to just click on one of these. Oh, seems to work now, which is which is good. Chest, one, two, three. Chest, one, two, three. Chest, one, two, three. Oh, that works pretty good. So probably comes down to taste. You know, do you want the launch pad capabilities or do you want a mini keyboard or do you want both? You could hook up both with a, uh, a USB splitter, which I have, and you could have 64 pads here, plus two banks of 16 here, plus the keys, plus the knobs. If that's to your liking, then uh, yeah, you could you could connect both. Hey, maybe the whole idea behind Koala is to make it mobile. Do you really need to hook it up to MIDI devices? Maybe not. Maybe the advantage here is just taking this onto the couch or sitting on your lap and working on a song idea. There's a couple things I didn't mention. One is when you have a MIDI keyboard connected to this, 
and you're doing editing of melodic sounds, it sends velocity information, which is pretty good. Rather than edit manually, you can just play keys the way you normally would, and that velocity information gets captured. There is one other feature that I'd like to see with the MIDI mapping, and that's to be able to save the MIDI mapping configuration for a given device. Right now it's all or nothing. So you can set it up to work with one device or multiple devices, but there's only really one setup and you can't save it. Overall, Koala is really cool. It's amazingly powerful. People don't realize what these capabilities are. There's a wonderful community supporting it. It's relatively inexpensive, especially if you're just getting started on iOS music production. And there is an upgrade to Samurai, which gives you some great features that I'd recommend. It's got auto chopping and slicing, which is great for beat making. And it has a full piano roll editor, which is awesome if you're doing traditional melodic editing. If you found this kind of useful, click on the subscribe button. Helps my channel and I can make more videos like this.